Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel." To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife the Lord God made tunics of skin, and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden, to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way, to guard the way to the tree of life. In Genesis 3.11, after Adam and Eve had eaten the forbidden fruit, they realized that they were naked and felt ashamed. This shame and realization of their nakedness is often linked to their decision to listen to the serpent, who had tempted them to eat the fruit in the first place. 
the serpent had convinced Adam and Eve that they would not die if they ate the fruit and that instead their eyes would be open and they would become like God, knowing good and evil. By listening to the serpent and disobeying God's command not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve opened themselves up to shame, vulnerability, and sin. Their nakedness, which they had not felt before, represented their newfound vulnerability and shame. It also symbolized their separation from God as they were no longer innocent and pure, but had instead sinned and disobeyed God's command. Genesis 3.11 is linked directly to listening to the serpent because it shows the consequences of Adam and Eve's decision to follow the serpent's advice instead of obeying God. It shows how their disobedience led to their shame and vulnerability, which they had not felt before, and how it separated them from God's presence, you see, as they hid themselves because they realized they were naked. The Hebrew word for nakedness is erom. In other parts of the Bible, we see it as era, meaning to strip off clothing, lay bare, or expose. This word is used throughout the Hebrew Bible to refer to physical nakedness as well as metaphorical nakedness such as being stripped of honor or dignity. In Genesis 3.11, after Adam and Eve had eaten the forbidden fruit, they realized they were naked and they felt ashamed. When God came to them, they hid themselves and explained that they were naked. God then asked them, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? This verse shows that nakedness was associated with shame and disobedience in the Garden of Eden. Throughout the Hebrew Bible, nakedness is often associated with shame, humiliation, and vulnerability. In Leviticus 18, 6 through 19, God gives a list of sexual sins and warns the Israelites not to uncover or expose the nakedness of their close relatives. This shows that nakedness was seen as private and intimate an intimate matter that should not be exposed to others in ezekiel 16 7 through 8 god describes israel as a newborn baby that he found naked and covered in blood he then washed her and clothed her in a fine garment symbolizing his care and protection over his people this passage shows that God sees nakedness as a symbol of vulnerability and his desire to provide for and protect his people. Overall, the Hebrew Bible portrays nakedness as a symbol of shame, disobedience, vulnerability, and intimacy. It is often associated with sexual sin and is seen as a private matter that should not be exposed to others. Genesis 3.11 emphasizes the importance of obeying the voice of the Most High and the consequences for disobedience from obeying the law, statutes, and commandments. As a nation, we're called to follow and obey the word of the Most High, which provides us with guidance and direction in our lives. It is important that we exercise caution when we listen to others. Their words probably don't align with our Elohim's will for us. We must test everything against the truth of Yahweh's word and seek his guidance through Bible, prayer, and study. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 reminds us, trust in Yahweh with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. This passage encourages us to put our trust in the most high and seek his direction in all aspects of our lives rather than solely on our own understanding or even the advice of others.